Hello, so it feels good to be making a science video, but um, I guess we'll just do some updates quickly. A couple of people, including Noel Red, suggested that I email YouTube directly, and that's got some of their videos restored by emailing directly, um, because then it's not just an automated process, an actual person looks at the things. Um, and I emailed, so I did do that, I emailed YouTube directly, and they said, ah, oh, fuck off. They said no, the two videos that were removed did violate the community guidelines of harmful acts and fire abuse. Um, that really worries me because A, I've never heard of fire abuse as a YouTube guideline. Um, they've, you know, you see people fucking around with fire all the time on YouTube. Well, apparently not anymore. And so that concerns me because it's not only the explosive videos I have to worry about, but everything else like the thermites and that sort of thing. Um, so everything on the main channel that's slightly, you know, borderline is down. On, well, it's on private at the moment. Um... So there's like 14 or so of the shit videos up there, just of us dicking around and stuff, um, which is a real shame. And they're gonna have to stay on private until the strikes wear off uh, in about two, three months. Um, the strikes will wear off, and then I'll, I'll make everything public, and then they'll probably get striked again. But you know, we'll the cycle will repeat, and at least for a few, you know, weeks, we'll have all the videos back up. And I'm slowly putting everything on Vimeo, so um, you can go over there. All right, now, actual chemistry. I happen to be in possession of some ammonium molybdenate. Molybdate. Molybd... Yeah, anyway. Now, this isn't just any chemical. Well, this actually happens to come from the one and only, or the two and only, chem player. Um, yeah, so just uh, a bit of a parting... I wouldn't say gift, but, you know, they, uh, they had to shut down, so... Um, I'm not bragging. Well, I am bragging, okay. I'm bragging. Fucking, yeah, chem player sent me this shit. Anyway, so we've got to do this proud, um, and the inorganic chemist in me thinks that we should make molybdenum metal out of this. Which isn't that easy of a task, I thought it would be pretty simple, but it's uh, going to be really difficult. Um, but I did find a paper to reduce this directly to molybdenum metal, uh, it's in the description. Um, now what it needs is magnesium powder, which I have, and zinc powder. I don't have zinc powder, so we're going to be making zinc powder in this video, so we're going to be reducing this in the next video. or some video down the line. So that's the purpose of this video. So what are we going to do? We're going to electrolyze um, sodium zincate, so um, zinc oxide dissolved in sodium hydroxide. Um, this is better than the acid, metal, uh, acid method apparently because you get uh, zinc powder out of it as opposed to zinc crystals. I've done the, the zinc acid method before um, and I've got pretty shitty zinc out of it. Um, but maybe that was also because I didn't have this beast of a thing. It's not that much of a beast, but it gives me some control over current and voltage, um, as opposed to just I can pumping 12 volts at four amps into it and getting this horrible zinc out of it. So I'm gonna find my bucket of zinc oxide somewhere. Here is our bucket of zinc oxide, and when I say bucket, I mean it is a literal bucket. Um, so some people may be asking, why don't I just buy zinc metal? Um, you, you must be new to the channel if you're asking that sort of question. Um, because you know I love making the shit myself. Um, but yeah, I do have this uh, couple of kilos of zinc oxide somewhere in here. Yeah, so I might as well, you know, bloody use this. Now, I don't really know exactly how much to put in, but this is the magic of electrochemistry. It doesn't really matter how much either one I do. The wishy-washy world of electrochemistry. No, I don't really mean that. Any electrochemist watching this will probably hate me, but... You know. All right, now here is our perfectly beautiful solution. <laughs> uh, as you can see, all the zinc oxide hasn't dissolved. I could be adding more sodium hydroxide to it dissolves, but it's actually beneficial to have undissolved zinc oxide in there because um, this electrolysis is going to produce sodium hydroxide um, as a byproduct. Um, and if we have excess zinc oxide in there, the sodium hydroxide will sodium hydroxide producer will react with further further react with the zinc oxide. Um, as opposed to reacting with our zinc metal, which it can do. Um, and that'll, and if it reacts with the um, zinc oxide, it'll just be producing more um, sodium zincate for us to electrolyze. So um, this is good if we're wanting to leave this overnight or something, which is what I want to do. Right, so what are we using to electrolyze this semen? Well, we've got a steel Milo lid container, and we have a graphite electrode that I, I'm pretty sure I stole from high school in year 11. So that was a few years ago. Um, so thanks, high school. Um, so two very professional um, electrodes. I don't even have crocodile. I only have one crocodile clip because I keep setting them on fire or corroding them to to high hell. 
Um, but you've got to work out which way the electrodes go because I've just hooked them up and I've got to make sure they go the right way because we want um, the zinc to stick on this because um, then we can scrape it off and then none of the metal ions will leave this and start plating onto there and we'll just get a um, nice zinc metal. Alright, we've hooked it all up. I think I got it the right way around. So then we crank up some voltage. It should flick over. Yep, that's good. So we're getting what, 5 volts at what, 5 amps at the moment, um, which is probably excessive. And yeah, look, it's bubbling. We are running electricity through the solution. Yes, I'm shamelessly copying Nerd Rage for a lot of this, um, but you know, he's copying other people and, um, you know, it all goes around. Um, his setup wasn't quite as ghetto, so, you know, we're not doing it all identical. And you're still watching this video, so, you know, send me hate mail. Alright, so it's been 10 minutes, so we'll just crank this off, have a look, and yep, there's our tasty zinc metal down the bottom. Um, so we'll just crank it back on. It's on far too high an amperage now. Um, really, I mean, we could run it at this speed, but uh, the temperature would rise in the solution, and I don't really want to run it overnight at such a high, um, you know, voltage. The main reason is is my um, graphite electrode won't hold up. It'll disintegrate. So if we crank it down, look at that. That's lovely. Um, so we'll let this run overnight. So we will fade to black and then fade back out of black to uh, show you the result. Okay, here we are about 18 hours later and our solution looks like shit, really. Um, but the good news is, well, it's good and bad news. The good news is that, is that the reaction has worked. The bad news is that all this black crap is uh, from a graphite electrode um, that has just sat on top of this thing. Oh, sorry, if I stir it up. Yeah, see, that's, that's looking more like what we thought it would look like. So, my graphite electrode is probably a little bit stuffed. Oh, that's held up better than I thought it would. That's not too bad. I mean, it's definitely degraded. See it. Um, but, you know, it's still very capable of running for another probably two nights. So that's great. Because, um, you know, I can run it till it dies. I don't really care because it's, you know, old and I got it for free. There's quite a bit of zinc plated on here, but not that much. Um, so I have a feeling a lot of zinc has fallen off in this, in this solution. So we'll have a bit of a scoop around. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a bit of a problem now because of all the zinc oxide in our solution. Gonna make separation of that pretty difficult. See that there's a whole lot of zinc metal, but there's a whole lot of zinc oxide in here as well. Um, so maybe it would have been better to run it without any undissolved zinc oxide to completely dissolve it in the sodium hydroxide. So then when the um the zinc oxide fell out, we can just scoop it out and um hasn't got any zinc oxide with it along with it. Um alright, so and then I'm I'm dumping the zinc into some methanol here. And um, we'll uh, dry it a bit later. So I'll scrape the zinc off and then let it run for another uh, couple of hours. All right, so we've got a decent enough amount of zinc here. Um, it's got quite a bit of zinc oxide in it, but if we give it a swirl, you can sort of see that zinc oxide. Zinc oxide is picked up into the solution as a suspension a lot quicker than the zinc is um, because the zinc is a lot more dense than it. So we should be able to just add some more water or methanol and just sort of swirl it around and decant off a lot of that zinc oxide. Um, and, you know, we don't really need high grade zinc for what we're doing. Yeah, and you can see the zinc looks much better now that I've decanted off um, that sort of grey solution. Um, we've lost some zinc, obviously, but, you know, we're still making more and, you know, I can just keep pumping it out. So, um, this looks good. So, we're just going to get that drying now. Alright, so we've got 2.2 grams of fairly crappy but minimal effort zinc. Um, so we'll have a look at it under the microscope, see what it looks like, see what the particle sizes are like. Alright, so this is the zinc under the microscope. It's a little bit hard to see the individual uh, pieces of zinc, seeing as it doesn't like to clamp together, but you can sort of see some. Let's see if we can move it around a little bit. Yeah, so it's, it's reasonably fine. Um, so this whole diameter, once again, is one millimetre so that you can sort of get a rough estimation on the size of the particles. Alright, so this is a commercial 500 mesh magnesium sample for comparison. Um, first thing you'll notice is they're all actually lovely spheres. So this sort of tells you that it's a, a product of probably ball milling um, to get it this fine. But really, each sort of sphere is, is comparatively larger than what was the zinc 
um, sort of sizing. So that means our zinc powder is quite fine, um, which is which is lovely to hear. Um, so yeah, that's quite interesting. I never never thought they'd be like wonderful spheres. Um, I mean, there are uh, sort of roughly the same sizing as a zinc, really, on how they look at it. So I say our zinc's about 500 mesh as well. Um, yeah, all right. Well, that's the end of the video. Um, thanks for watching this uh, pretty easy synthesis of zinc metal. Um, looking forward to using it to uh, reduce our molybdenum down to uh, molybdenum. <laughs> you get the point. All right, see you next time.